What is going on YouTube? So this is totally off base for what I normally do, but we're going to try and get into 3D printing now. I've actually had this printer for uh, probably a little over a year now, but it's an Ender 3, just the standard run of the mill. I've made some weird, funky modifications to it. It's a little add-on fan shroud with the 5015 fans and nothing crazy. I've tried to do some other stuff, but the fans are kind of overrated, really. And this video topic is actually based on this little guy. So this is a 3D printed collet, which I have never seen before anybody make this, and probably for very good reasons. <laughs> so hopefully we won't get hurt, but uh, this will be very interesting. So this is my original collet, the mini mill. Uh, it only came with one whenever I bought it, and it's kind of rusty and nasty, but it's only a 3 8 So I want to run this fly cutter that I made, and it has a half-inch shank. So I made a half-inch collet. So... Who knows how well this is going to go. It printed fairly well. The f surface finish is astounding. That's kind of a funky artifact. I haven't figured that out yet. If anybody knows what that is, let me know in the comments. If it's just some funky ghosting or what's going on. But this will be a little bit longer video, at least for me, because I don't usually make long videos. But we're going to pop this off. We're going to run out to the mill, and we're going to... Try to chuck it up. I tested the threads, and it's a M12 by 1.75 draw bar, which is weird, and that's why it's kind of hard to get collets for it. Because if you get on Amazon or eBay or something, most of these small NT number three collets are 3/8 by 16 draw bars, not M12 by 1.75 draw bars. So we made threads on this one. And we're going to tap it to clean it up because I printed this at a 0.2 layer height, so they're a little messy, but it works. And we're going to see how bad the runout is because if the runout's too bad, this may not work out very well. But we're going to see how it goes. We'll get it chucked up and uh, measure it. All right, everybody, so quick recap. I uh, attempted to tighten the collet, and as you can see, it just snapped the ears off of it. So, it wasn't exactly a clean layer break, so I imagine it wasn't a um, adhesion, layer adhesion problem. It was probably just the plastic failing. So, the only thing I can come up with is I can extend the taper further down so that there is more material there because I necked it down where it snapped at and I could continue extending it down just for sheer <clears throat> thickness purposes more than anything and that would help it out a bit because you know it would still flex if I just get rid of that chamfer and just let it continue down but not sure at the moment. I know it didn't. I didn't even register on my torque wrench before it snapped, and it kept just continued sucking in the uh, collet until this happened, which I assumed probably would happen. But the threads held up beautifully. No issue on the threads, as expected. I mean, holding 430 inch pounds whenever I tested it, that is a good amount, which that was with one inch worth of threads. And I don't have that test piece, but it actually sucked these threads out about yay far against the washers that I had the bolt spacing. So overall, I was attempting to tighten it to 10 foot pounds, and <laughs> that is definitely not going to happen with how thin walled this is. I mean, you're talking... Um, I don't even remember, it's probably like 7 millimeters, somewhere around there. 
I'll have to add in what it actually was, but <clears throat> overall surface finish, great. The Z seam isn't too bad. You can see it kind of dips in just a tick where the seam is, but I just have to tune in my coasting a little bit more and we'll might give it another shot. Might end this video here. I'm not sure. I don't really like leaving it unfinished. So if the video continues, then obviously I continued with it. But that's it for now. So as you can tell everybody, we did not give up on it. We are going to make this happen somehow. So we are in Fusion 360 which is what I always use for modeling my 3D prints. And I've already modified this, but this is the general collet. And you just, does, I wanted to make this, so you just change the center hole diameter, be super easy. But we have to make this thing hold. Some kind, of, I might not try and tighten it to 10 foot pounds the next time, but what we did do is we added Oh, a couple millimeters here to the inside. So and before this just went straight down and then met the thread section on the sides. So now we've added an extra several millimeters of material right there. So <clears throat> we're going to see how that does. It's not the most elegant looking thing, but uh, I don't really care. <laughs> If it works, that would be sweet. So we'll get this printed up, and then uh, I'll meet you back at the mill, and we'll see if we can try again. And we're back. And as you can see, we're out at the mill. Please uh, disregard my, you know, insane mess of a shop. But anyways, we have the plastic end mill chucked up. And we're about to check the run out, which granted we're checking it right there, which I made this tool and who knows if it's it completely, there's no taper there at all, but <clears throat> this is a decent enough test for me. So we're going to give her a spin, see what the run out's like. And amazingly enough, I think it's legitimately like one and a half thou. It's insane. I never expected this good of a tolerance. Maybe it's indexed perfectly. I don't know, but that's, I would expect that from, you know, a Chinese call it or something. Two thou run out. This is insane to me. So, with that in mind, I'm going to put the cutter back in, and I'm going to bring some aluminum home tomorrow, and I might print a PLA block. I haven't decided if I want to even try it on plastic, because I'm pretty damn confident it's going to work. I mean, it is in there pretty dang good. I did not tighten it up anywhere near as tight as I did the first time. I just kind of snugged it with a wrench and it's not slipping. So I imagine with a really shallow depth of cut, we'll probably be okay. So I will get a block of material and be back shortly. All right, everybody. So we are at the mill. So I got this block of aluminum and we're going to cut it vertically first, so it's not cutting as much material. Maybe give it a chance to actually function before we attempt to destroy it and break that collet. So, without further ado, let's uh, do scary things. I start getting vibrations at a little over probably 500 RPM, so we'll just run it around 400, 450, and see what she'll do. Okay. 
And this part is definitely not square at all. Hell, the mill's probably not trimmed very well, but notice how I'm definitely keeping my arms out of the way. That should be about three cow. If it touches. Oh. Now I may fast forward through all this, we'll see, but for now, we are not. Either my head is way out of trim or this part is very not flat. Which is a scrap piece, so I would assume it's probably just not flat. So let's take a chunk. Let's go for uh, like five. So we'll cut from left to right from now on. <laughs> so that appears to be the low point. Let's go for another five. So I'll take a quick break to look at it and it is somewhat machined. I probably was going maybe too quickly. I'm not much of a machinist so you guys can correct me if you want to. But it cut aluminum a tiny amount. But let's uh, take a quick pause and I'll uh, see if I can set it up the other direction. Alright, we got our part moved, and sorry the angle's not very good, I'll show you the ridiculous contraption I have set up on my motorcycle here in just a little bit, but for now, let's go again. Kind of nice on the side closest to me. Oops. 
That was a slip. A little bit slower. Get too much material at once. This is the max width that this mill can check out on this device. I am rather surprised. We're definitely slipping on the return journey. It's also possible that the uh, indexing changed and our runout is greater than it was before. So I'm going to try to tighten this up just a little bit more, maybe prevent it from slipping. I'm a little afraid to go much more than that. <laughs> It sucked it in there pretty good. We'll stop there. Stop it over ahead. See if we can at least finish this. And this probably changed our height. Oh, the skin. Yeah. It sucked it up in there deeper. Quite a bit deeper. We're going to take it slow. I think that's the deepest cut we've taken so far. Much too deep. <laughs> Turn the bed up in about 10. Because that looked like about 15. They're still cutting.
That must have been about 20, because I've moved that for Go for five. Like right, I want it. That's the thing I don't like. If I flex this, it will move. I'm gonna try just not touching it. See how it, what the finish looks like. Let's go one more. A little bit deeper this time. So it seemed to like that better. That's pretty good. All right, everybody. There it is. Our final surface finish. And I have to say, I am rather impressed that it worked at all. <laughs> and, you know, it was taking some pretty deep cuts. Yeah, we saw some slippage, but we tightened it up a little bit more and all that slippage went away. So I'll probably condense a lot of these sections, but now that is just ridiculous. I don't think anybody thought this was actually going to work. <laughs> there were people on the Facebook group thinking that I was going to throw this call it across the room and hurt myself. And I don't know. I just doubted it would happen. And I don't even think you can see it. It sucked it up in there so deep. Maybe, it can, let's see if it'll come back out. Let's try that. Of course, we might take our part back out here. Man, that is just a mirror finish. It may be a little bit scratchy, but it's extremely reflective. I'll give it that. spindle in place. That was not hard to do. 
right there. If I can figure out how to use tools again. Give her a little tap. It looks like we may have a little bit of plastic deposited on there. Not bad. We're going to take this guy the rest of the way out. See what kind of damage is done. Wow, I don't think it's spun in the bore at all. If you can see that, I was holding it down too low. It doesn't look outside damaged at all. You can see a little bit of rubbing on the inside. But as proven by the oh focus quit tiny bit of plastic on there it only slipped eh, about three times in total I'd say I'd say if all you had was a 3d printer and you needed to call it you could make this happen is it the best option no but it's cool and uh, probably end this video here let me know if you guys have any other things you want me to try <laughs> 3d printing ridiculous things i've got some big projects in mind coming up uh, drill press is for sure happening i'm gonna reprint my arbor press maybe make a video over that maybe a little time lapse i don't know but see you next time